this particular morning, I'm bidding a job up in, at uh, Cedar City Hospital. And I run out to my brand new Dodge truck. It's raining outside, jump in the cab. I'm late, hurry across town to grab a, one of my employees. And he's a 19-year-old punk kid. He jumps in the cab of my truck. And he shakes the rain off of himself and he points right at me, put your seatbelt on, just like that. And I was like, really, man? I mean, really? So I was 30 years old. I'm like, look, Brett, his name's Brett. Uh, I'm, I'm in control, whatever that means. And don't tell me what to do. And we jumped on the highway, headed up towards Cedar City. Instantly, rain turns to snow. And for the second time, Brett's like, hey, Matt, look, you need to protect yourself. Put your seatbelt on. And this time I gave him all the reasons. You know, I, I, six, two, two fifteen. I'd run the St. George marathon in October. I was, I was in the best shape of my life. Mm. I truly thought there's no way I can get hurt, mm. but I'm too strong to get hurt. And, uh, and I didn't like the fact that he told me for a second time what to do. So, um, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm your boss. You're, I'm 30, you're 19. Don't tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. So up the Canyon, we go, we get to new harmony. I'm following a semi truck. Semi truck gets off the highway at uh, New Harmony because he could not make out where the highway started and stopped, and that was my beacon, right? I just following him, but I knew I was late, <clears throat> and so I decided to press on and go through these semi truck tracks. And right then, for the third time, Brett's like, "Matt, please put your seatbelt on." And for the third time, I said no. So not a still small voice or a warm, funny feeling. Someone sitting right next to me, just you know, hey, protect yourself. Mm-hmm. And pride and arrogance got me. Yeah. And uh, like you guys are put together guys. You're, you're, you know, and um, I see you got the KT tape because you're getting a little older, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could, I've been giving him a hard time about that. <laughs> right. But go back to our prime. We're not getting hurt. Exactly. Right. Like what's going to hurt us? Yeah. yeah. And, and that was my mentality at the time. And, and I'd gotten away with so many stupid acts, like riding my Harley down the, the highway, standing up on the seat. Cliff jumping at Lake Powell without checking the depth. Think, like, gotten away with death so many times, I truly thought I was invincible. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the third time, I said no. Lost control of my truck. It went down into the median, caught dirt, rolled uh, two and a quarter times, hmm. ended up on the passenger door, still running. And I couldn't see anything. Everything was black. And I was disoriented. I was confused. And I realized the reason why I couldn't see anything is my hips were covering my face. <sighs> yeah, my, my back had gone in the steering wheel, and I didn't snap into like a pencil. So I suffered what they call a T12 compression burst. Hmm. So you're, you're right above your L spine, and everybody has L when they get older, their lumbar yeah. spine hurts. Yeah. Well, the, the vertebrae right above my L spine, there was so much pressure that it grenaded in my back. <sighs> and a piece of that bone went into my spinal cord, and at 30... Lost everything, Dang. everything. And the fear, the, the, everything was so scary, so scary. I was laying there in the truck. I reached up over my head and grabbed my knees and pulled them back down. Now my, my feet are on the floorboard. I'm laying on the passenger door and Brett's buckled in right here. And I knew immediately, I was like, Brett, I'm, I'm paralyzed. And it took, it, the weather was so bad that morning. There were slide offs everywhere. And it took emergency crews two hours to drive down from Cedar to cut us out with the jaws of life, put me on a gurney, uh, put me in a helicopter and life flight me to LDS hospital in Salt Lake. So I had the choice, either Salt Lake or Vegas. Uh, but I grew up in Salt Lake. Yeah. So I was like, Hey, let's go to Salt Lake. So we'll get up there and MRIs, CTs, x-rays. <clears throat> they find out a piece of bone is into my spinal cord. They got to go in for surgery. And I, I wake up in ICU. I'd gone through my first surgery. So I went, went through two surgeries. The first surgery, they opened me up and took out all the bone and shrapnel. And when they looked at my cord, that they couldn't see any physical damage to my cord. It wasn't mm-hmm. severed. It wasn't leaking spinal fluid, anything mm-hmm. like that. Everything was intact. Yeah. Lucky. Uh, lucky. Yeah. yeah. So they, I was bleeding so bad. Like a, they had to sew me up. They did blood transfusions, all that. And then I had to go in for a second surgery. And my back right now at this moment is held together with 12 titanium screws and then two run rods that run the full length of my spine, a plate and a basket. And what they did with this basket is they put this uh, titanium basket around my spinal cord where that vertebrae was missing, Mm -hmm. took out one of my ribs, put it inside that basket, screwed me all together, 
put me in a brace that went from my hips all the way up to just under my chin and so that I couldn't move around and hurt that stuff. I remember waking up in ICU and I was alone. It was dark. You had the red beeping lights and all this. And I looked down at my, I couldn't sit up. All I wanted to do was sit up. I hadn't sit up Mm -hmm. in 10 days. So I spent 10 days in ICU and I looked at my right hand and I had electrodes and tubes and all this stuff and looked at my left hand. There's nothing. So the goal was reach down, grab grab my quad, pull my, and I, and I couldn't feel the touch of my hand and my leg was so cold Hmm. and so rubbery. Hmm. And, uh, so I just started crying and started thinking of a way to end this. I, I wasn't going to live a life of paralysis. Yeah. Like, like what? I didn't even know what I was anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so scared. So after 10 days, they, they moved me in my own hospital room and, uh, growing up in Salt Lake, people from my elementary school all the way through Salt Lake community college. My wife says four to 500 people had waited 10 days to come in and give me love and support. Tell me everything's going to be good. But I just wanted this nightmare over. So at this point you're married. Do you have kids? Yeah. So I married, married my high school sweetheart, uh, Natalie. How long had you been married for? We had been married. Let's see. I got married when I knew everything at 19 and I was 30. (laughs) So yes, 11 years. Okay. 11 years. And how many kids did you have? Three. Yeah. And my, so my oldest is 27, now my little girl is 25, and then my youngest is 23. And at the time, they were 8, 10, and 12. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, so they all totally knew what was going on. Yeah. Oh. Dang. Oh, well, the, the younger two, the younger two didn't really understand. They knew dad got in an accident and mm. something really bad because they had to come from St. George to Salt Lake because dad was going to be up there for months. Yeah. Um, but my oldest, he knew what was up. And, uh, you know, the doctor came out and, and in front of the, all these people stood up on a chair and now I wasn't there for this, but this is how my wife explains it. Stood up on a chair. Hey, can I have everybody's attention? This is what's happened to Matt. He's not going to walk again. He's a T12. So, so two inches above my belly button. He's a T12 comes complete spinal cord injury. Um, and it was very emotional for everybody. And, um, so anyway, th- that, following morning as people would come into my room to wish me well and give me love and all that. I wouldn't open my eyes for anybody. And these are people I've known my whole life. I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to anybody. Do you, was that because you felt ashamed? Was it because you felt like, I mean, what, what was the reason? Cause you could, right? Right. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I, I didn't want to, I knew I was paralyzed. Yeah. And I, I had always been this beacon, at least the way I viewed it, yeah. this beacon of strength and couldn't endure and anything's possible with mm-hmm. Matt. Like when shit hit the fan, you, you turned to me. Yeah. Not to be, that, that's who I was. That was yeah. my idea. You were willing to take the pressure and put the load on your mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. So, so that's who I was and I wasn't that guy anymore. 